Greetings and salutations once again, Ipsic Peeps. Dave S. back for another installment of Practice Score. In last night's episode, we took a look at how some of the basics of scoring is handled using the Practice Score application. This evening, I'd like to take a look at how procedural penalties are applied and how disqualifications are handled by the Practice Score application. In addition, I'd like to take a look at how steel targets are scored. So, as you can see, we've got the practice score application open. We're looking at the practice score app main menu. We're working in our PowerPoint demo match once again. So let's go ahead and enter some scores. We select enter scores from the main menu. Let's say for sake of discussion that this morning we're working on stage five. And our first squad of the day, squad number one. The competitors on squad one are listed. Let's suggest, for sake of discussion, that Marge Simpson is our first shooter. And the stage details for stage 5 are displayed. So, we enter Marge's time. Let's say Marge shot this time or this stage in 14.72 seconds. Once we've confirmed that the time is correct, we select Done, and the target scoring detail is displayed. Now, as you can see, there are some steel targets on this stage. Notice here, left hand side underneath the target number, there are steel targets displayed. Practice score assumes that all of the available steel targets have been hit unless otherwise indicated. So, as you can see, the scoring line for steel is green, which indicates that all of the required hits have been satisfied. Let's say, for sake of discussion, that Marge had a couple of mics on the steel. By simply entering the mics in the appropriate scoring box, you can see that the number of steel targets indicated as hit is decreased by the number of mics we enter. Now that we've dealt with the steel targets, let's move on to scoring the paper targets. 2 alpha, alpha charlie, 2 alpha, 2 alpha, but uh oh, Marge is a little bit miffed about having missed those two steals right off the top of the stage, and as a result, she ran right past target number five. As a result, we need to score the target as two misses and apply a procedural penalty. And of course, the procedural penalty in this case would be for a failure to engage. So we score the two mics on target number five, and now it's time to apply the procedural. Notice up here, near the upper left-hand corner of the screen, procedurals. And on the right-hand side, the entry box for procedural penalties. So we select the entry box for procedural penalties and the available procedural penalties are displayed. Now there's a long list of procedural penalties here including down at the bottom warnings for doing things like taking a sight picture or dry firing, approaching targets too closely while scoring, creeping after the standby command. In this particular case what we're looking for is Back up here at the top of the list, failure to engage, 10.2.7. We have the option of entering as many failure to engage penalties as apply. By simply selecting the plus sign next to the appropriate procedural penalty, the number of penalties to be applied is displayed. Now in this case, Marge just ran past one target, so we've applied one procedural penalty. We take a look down here at the bottom of the procedural penalties um, entry field select OK, the procedural penalty appears in the procedurals box, and then we can go on and score the final paper target. In this case, let's say Marge shot an Alpha Charlie. Down here in the lower left hand corner, status indicates that the stage has been completed or that all of the available scoring hits have been satisfied. Bottom right hand corner, we select review, and we're presented with the stage summary or the scoring summary for Marge's pass on stage five. You can see it's Marge Simpson, open minor, 10 alphas, two Charlies, four misses, one procedural penalty. And the detail for that procedural penalty is listed in the scoring summary. 10.2.7, failure to engage. Marge isn't happy about it, but there's nothing she can do. <clears throat> she left it all out on the stage. So, Marge selects save, and her scores are committed to the match. <clears throat> Pardon me. Let's say that our next competitor up on the stage is the Love Master. So we select Love Master from the competitors, 
and the scoring detail for stage five, Love Master, is displayed. Let's say that the Love Master burned this one down, baby. 12.32 seconds. Time has been properly entered, select done, and we're presented with the stage scoring detail. Now again, we see the steel targets listed. In this instance, Love Master shot all four of the steel targets. Again, Practice Score assumes that the steel targets have all been hit unless otherwise indicated. In this case, we'll just leave the steel target line the same or as it's presented. Now, during this particular stage, Love Master had some trouble. Tripped on his, uh, tripped on his shoelace and dropped his gun. And as a result, he needs to be disqualified. And so we're going to score the stage as shot, and then we're going to disqualify the Love Master. He had a chance to engage the steel targets. Say for sake of discussion that he got past the first three paper targets before tripping, so to speak, and dropping his gun. The balance of the targets are going to be scored as Mike's because he was unable to engage them. We'll have to apply the appropriate procedural penalties. In this instance, failures to engage. There are one, two, three of them here. Select OK. So now we've satisfied all of the scoring detail for the stage. However, Love Master dropped his gun. Down here at the very bottom of the left-hand corner of the screen, Disqualifications, DQ press that button. We're prompted to uh, confirm that we do in fact want to disqualify Love Master, and yes, in fact, we do. And various reasons for a disqualification are displayed. All of the various things that somebody might get disqualified for are listed here. With one notable exception, as you all know, Section 10.5 of the rulebook describes unsafe gun handling. The preamble to that section suggests that the following are examples of unsafe gun handling, but are not limited to the, specific, inst the uh, specific infractions that are listed in the rulebook. I do not see a straight 10.5 disqualification here, which leaves it up to the CRO and RO's discretion to determine whether or not a particular action taken by a competitor was, uh, was unsafe. We'll deal with that later, because I'm not entirely sure how Practice Score intends for us to deal with that. But in this particular instance, Love Master dropped his gun. Here, 10-5-3, dropped gun. We select that as the appropriate reason for disqualification, and we say, save. Now, we don't get a summary of Love Master's scores, simply because he was disqualified. We can go back and take a look, however, and note that Love Master for Stage 5 disqualified. Reason for the disqualification is listed 1053 as a dropped gun. Go back to the squad listing, and we can see here in the Love Master's entry on the squad, he has been DQ'd. Now that disqualification follows Love Master through the rest of the match. Let's go back, upper left-hand corner. Let's say for sake of discussion that we want to shoot stage number two, squad number one, and we will see that Love Master is listed. However, he's been DQ'd. If we attempt to enter scores for Love Master on stage number two, we're informed that he was disqualified on stage number five. We can go back to the squad listing and then select the, uh, the next appropriate competitor. So, while that may not have been nearly as scintillating as last night's episode, I wanted to, uh, as I said off the top, share with you guys how procedural penalties are applied, how disqualifications are handled, and how steel targets are scored. In my considered opinion and not so humble opinion, I think we've achieved that objective. And so for this evening, I will bid you all a cheery farewell.